Have you ever wondered how much Uber and Lyft contribute to traffic congestion? Sometimes when I'm driving in downtown San Francisco, it seems like over half the cars have Uber and Lyft uh, decals, a uh, headdress uh, on the windshield and on, on the back windows. So a couple of uh, news stories came out, uh, which I'm gonna share with you, uh, which uh, give us some numbers about the percentage of traffic congestion that are uh, caused by Uber and by Lyft, and also why do people use Uber and Lyft so much, and what does the future portend? And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you what I think is a really important uh, action that we drivers can take and passengers can take to improve this traffic congestion situation. Hey everybody, it's Jay Crater with The Ride Share Guy. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, Uber and Lyft and kind of the, the effect that they're having on the environment, on traffic congestion, and why? So number one, Uber and Lyft's percentage of traffic congestion is increasing. So we obviously knew this because, what, 15 years ago, there was no Uber and Lyft, and now there is Uber and Lyft. So their percentage of traffic has increased. This is the article that I read. As you can see, it's titled, How Much Traffic Do Uber and Lyft Cause? The thing that I found interesting in the article is that while it shows the percentages, um, which I'm gonna cover next, it doesn't really say how much traffic congestion overall is growing. Um, and to me, that's the important number, is if it was X you know, five years ago and now it's 2X, that's big news. But what this article is really looking at is the percentage that uh, Uber and Lyft are of that total and then versus uh, personal vehicles and commercial vehicles. So number two is the amount of traffic that Uber and Lyft account for as a percentage is pretty darn small. So let's just look at this graphic here. What we can see is like in Seattle, right? In the, in the city of Seattle, 2%. Only 2% of all the traffic is from Uber and Lyft. The highest it goes is in San Francisco. So we see in the city of San Francisco, it's about 13%. So that means like one out of every eight cars is, a, is, a, is driving a Uber or Lyft. And the rest are personal vehicles and commercial vehicles. And if you look at that San Francisco area, um, for the rest of the area, it's only 2.7, less than 3% of all the cars are Uber and Lyft. So to me, that seems like a, a pretty low number. Number three, the percentage of traffic that Uber and Lyft account for is gonna continue to grow. I mean, Uber and Lyft are just popular and they're gonna get more popular because uh, there's so many areas within the country that don't even have one or the other, um, and it's just going to continue to grow. So we know the percentage is going to grow. We don't know, though, where those passengers are coming from. Are Number they... four, why are Uber and Lyft so popular? Well, I found this other really interesting article, and as you can see right here, it's called, I swapped my personal car for an Uber, and this is what happened. And what you see on the screen right now is a uh, what people said uh, is the reason that they loved drive, uh, being driven to work. Now the upside, no traffic fines. Considering we racked up thousands of Durhams and traffic fines, okay, uh, opting for Uber is a safe option. You also don't have to worry about costs related to registration or insurance. Parking is another upside, as you end up saving time and avoiding stress. And while the summer scenery isn't too great, it's nice to sit back, relax, and take a break from driving, which can get tiring and overwhelming. But our favorite part of the Uber Challenge is those short but often funny, candid, and earnest conversations we've had with the drivers. All right, let's hear it for the drivers out there, some of whom are surgeons, doctors, engineers, fathers, mothers, strangers you get to share a moment with before driving back into this frenzied world. So five, how do we, how do we reduce our carbon footprint? So this article, the first article and the second article do not address the overall number of rides or number of miles driven uh, by cars. It just looks at the percentages and how they're, how they're parceled out. The suggestion I have is that more people do Uber pool and Lyft, uh, Lyft uh, shared. The more people who do that, we're putting more bodies in a car. So instead of having three individual cars, let's say you, three people do Lyft, 
Instead, those three people jump into a lift shared. Suddenly, you've knocked two cars off the road. And I know a lot of drivers don't like the Uber pool and they don't like the lift shared. Um, I don't understand that. Um, if you're working for towards a bonus, those numbers, they help you to get a bonus quickly. And it's just good to know that you're doing the environment a bit of a favor. So I recommend uh, embrace the Uber pool and the Lyft shared, because that's, as far as I can tell, that's the only way we are going to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, we can blame Uber and Lyft for uh, putting more cars on the road, but we don't know that for sure. We do know that as a percentage, Uber and Lyft are accounting for more, uh, but even then it's such a small number. In some markets, uh, anywhere from 87 to 98% of traffic is caused by personal vehicles. That's you and me having our own car, like I got my own car, and driving them. So that's the main culprit. And the first article really points that out, that the main culprit is personal vehicles and commercial vehicles, not Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft will continue in popularity and will continue to grow. The real question is, how much of that is going to come from public transportation, which is not a great thing? Um, how much of that is going to come from personal vehicles, people you know, not driving to work, but instead taking Uber and Lyft? So these are questions. And then the other, the other one is, how many people, how many passengers are going to start using and embracing uh, Uber Pool and Lyft Shared? Because those are uh, definite ways in which instead of having three or two vehicles on the road, we're having one because people are sharing their rides. I also have some of my best conversations um, in those uh, Lyft shared and Uber pool rides because you got a bunch of different people talking about a topic and uh, frankly I, I love it. I, I much prefer those kinds of rides. So hey everybody, this is Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Hope you all go out and have a great day. Uh, if you like this article, give it a like. If you got a comment, leave a comment. If you have not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Every single week we put out three to four to five uh, videos on the topic of rideshare driving. We have industry news, we have tips and techniques, all things that can help you make more money in less time. You'll go out and have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Be safe out there. Bye for now.